Did you notice anything uh, uh, like that, that sort of reception? No. Have you ever thought that Hollywood's ethics and the behavior of its stars couldn't possibly sink any lower? Well, it's sad to say, but scandal and Hollywood have been inseparable since day one. And now a ritual as old as the city itself. I give out my laundry. Okay. Number 20. Fatty Arbuckle Assaulted Virginia Rap. Our Hollywood scandal countdown begins with one of the industry's biggest stars, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. In 1921, Arbuckle was at the pinnacle of his career, having just inked one of the most lucrative studio deals in history. He celebrated his newfound success by booking a suite at San Francisco's St. Francis Hotel for a wild weekend of partying. However, this seemingly extravagant bash would soon take a dark turn. It was at this hotel suite that a young, unknown actress named Virginia Rep, who had just joined the party, ran out of one of the bedrooms screaming and in distress. The other partygoers assumed she was merely drunk and failed to seek immediate medical attention for her. Tragically, Virginia Rapp passed away days later, and the public and media attention shifted to Arbuckle. He was charged with her murder, with allegations that this assault had caused peritonitis, ultimately leading to her death. The legal saga that followed was nothing short of sensational. Arbuckle faced not one, but three trials. The first two ended in hung juries, and it was in the third trial that he was finally acquitted due to a complete lack of concrete evidence against him. However, the damage to Arbuckle's career was permanent. Despite his acquittal, he was blacklisted, and the stain on his reputation proved difficult to remove. His ban from Hollywood was eventually lifted, but the scars remained. He struggled to regain his former popularity, even resorting to working under a pseudonym. Sadly, Arbuckle's triumphant return to stardom never materialized. His life took a tragic turn, and at the age of 46, he passed away. His close friend and fellow actor Buster Keaton would later claim that it was a death brought on by a broken heart. Number 19. Walt Disney's Dark Side As the world teetered on the edge of a looming war in 1938, with Germany's aggressive expansion in Europe, the last thing most Americans wanted was to get involved in the impending conflict. The threat of global war was palpable with Germany annexing Austria and occupying Studentland, foreshadowing the imminent takeover of Czechoslovakia and the invasion of Poland. Amid this turmoil, a controversial figure from the heart of Nazi Germany would make an unexpected appearance in the glamorous world of Hollywood. Her name was Leni Riefenstahl, a German director infamous for her work as Adolf Hitler's favorite filmmaker. In 1934, Hitler had bestowed upon her the official role of documenting the Nazi party's activities. Her mission? To create a documentary, Olympia, showcasing the purported glory and success of the 1936 Berlin Olympics, a propaganda piece for the Nazi regime. Leni Riefenstahl's documentary was no ordinary film. It spanned two lengthy parts and ran for over four and a half hours. Even before her arrival in Hollywood, the vast majority of the film industry had taken a stance against her. The Hollywood Anti-Nazi League was at the forefront, vehemently opposing her presence and the potential influence of Nazi ideology in Tinseltown. They made their stance clear through a full-page ad, which boldly proclaimed, There is no room in Hollywood for Lenny Riefenstahl. In this moment, when hundreds of thousands of our brethren await certain death, close your doors to all Nazi agents. Hollywood, for the most part, shunned Riefenstahl, with notable exceptions. One of these exceptions was gossip columnist Hedda Hopper, who attended a private screening of Riefenstahl's film. It's worth noting that Hopper worked for Hearst newspapers, which were owned by William Randolph Hearst. During the 1930s, Hearst's papers were known for having prominent fascists like Benito Mussolini and Hitler write columns for them. Number 18. The Third Marriage of Jerry Lee Lewis Myra Lewis Williams also known as Myra Gale Brown, found herself in the center of one of the most shocking scandals in the world of rock and roll. She was not only the third wife of the legendary rock and roll pioneer Jerry Lee Lewis, but also, and more infamously, his 13-year-old cousin at the time of their marriage. In December 1957, Jerry Lee Lewis, famous for his hits like Whole Lotta Shaking Going On and Great Balls of Fire, eloped with Myra Gale Brown. Their romance had blossomed when Lewis moved into the Memphis home of Myra's father, J.W. Brown, 
who happened to be Lewis's cousin and bass player. The scandal wasn't just about their age difference, as Lewis was 22 and Williams was a mere 13. What sent shockwaves through the media and the public was the revelation that Myra Gale Brown was also Lewis's second cousin. Furthermore, Lewis was still married to his second wife, Jane Mitchum, when he tied the knot with Myra. The fallout from this revelation was swift and severe. Lewis's tour was abruptly canceled, and he faced blacklisting by radio stations. Overnight, his earnings plummeted, and his career was in jeopardy. Yet, it's essential to understand the context. In his Louisiana home of Faraday, young marriages were not uncommon, and Lewis himself had already been married for the first time at the age of 16, ultimately having seven wives throughout his lifetime. Despite the scandal and professional setbacks, Jerry Lee Lewis didn't let his career wither away. He continued to record music and perform in theaters during this challenging period. Remarkably, he managed to mount a comeback about a decade later. Number 17. Joan Crawford, Mommy Dearest In the 21st century, we're accustomed to the constant stream of celebrity tell-alls, thanks to the age of internet gossip and reality television. But this wasn't always the case. The scandalous revelations of a celebrity's private life weren't as common until 1978 when Christina Crawford's expose of her own mother, the renowned actress Joan Crawford, ushered in a new era of sensational celebrity scoops. Joan Crawford had adopted baby Christina in 1939 and their relationship at first was filled with love. However, as Christina grew, the dynamics within the family began to shift. It was reported that Joan started to assert dominance over her daughter struggling to come to terms with the fact that Christina was no longer a child. The trouble escalated during Christina's teenage years, but the breaking point arrived when she decided to pursue her dream of acting. When a surgery forced Christina to leave her role on the soap opera The Secret Storm in 1968, Joan stepped into her shoes. This betrayal strained their relationship further and the two became estranged. Tragically, Joan passed away in 1977 and it wasn't long before Christina published her shocking memoir, Mommy Dearest. This book was groundbreaking for its time, revealing that Joan Crawford, the celebrated Hollywood icon, was, in Christina's eyes, a self-absorbed, heartless, and abusive mother. The media latched on to the scandalous claims, and it became an instant sensation. But the drama didn't end there. The book was adapted into a film starring Faye Dunaway, known for its campy portrayal but still contributing to a shift in public opinion about Joan Crawford. While Mommy Dearest garnered immense popularity, it faced considerable opposition from those who knew Joan personally. Actors like Van Johnson and Myrna Loy publicly defended Joan's character, as did Christina's own sisters, Kathy and Cindy. However, one thing was undeniable. Mommy Dearest had blazed a trail for an era of explosive celebrity tell-all books, setting the stage for the many scandals and revelations we see today. Number 16. Woody Allen's Daughter Woody Allen, the filmmaker known for his self-deprecating and neurotic characters, often featured in his award-winning movies, found himself at the center of a real-life scandal that could rival any movie plot. It was revealed that Allen was having an affair with his then-girlfriend's adopted daughter, who happened to be a staggering 35 years his junior. Allen, celebrated for his sharp and witty one-liners, had risen to fame as a writer, director, and actor. His romantic involvement at the time with actress Mia Farrow, who was known for her numerous adopted children, one of whom was a young girl named Soon Yi Previn. The controversy ignited in 1991 when Farrow stumbled upon photographs of the then 21-year-old Soon Yi Previn at Allen's home. As expected, the scandal sent shockwaves through Hollywood and beyond. However, in a surprising turn of events, this unconventional relationship not only survived, but thrived. Allen and Previn, despite the considerable age gap, defied the odds and married in 1997 when Allen was 62 and Previn was 27. Remarkably, as of 2012, the couple was still together. Number 15. Pola Negri and Rudolph Valentino on August 23, 1926, newspaper headlines blared the shocking news, Valentino is dead. Hollywood's greatest lover, Rudolph Valentino, had passed away at the tender age of 31, and the world was in mourning. His tragic death was attributed to a ruptured ulcer, though it sparked a frenzy of rumors and speculations. 
At the time, Valentino was romantically involved with actress Pola Negri, often referred to as the femme fatale of the 1920s. The news of his demise left Negri inconsolable, and she played a prominent role in the events that followed. Tens of thousands of people paid their respects to Valentino at his open casket in New York City, and an astonishing 100,000 mourners lined the streets outside the church where his funeral service took place. Valentino's final film, The Son of the Sheik, was released just a few weeks before his hospitalization in August 1926. Despite his relatively short career, his worldwide popularity was undeniable, and his death left a profound impact on the public. Pola Negri, his lover, attended the funeral and claimed to be engaged to the Italian-born heartthrob. A Hollywood legend emerged, suggesting that Valentino's demise was linked to a supposedly cursed ring he wore. He purchased the ring in San Francisco, despite the jeweler's ominous warning, those who have worn it have faced death. Negri kept this tiger-eyed stone ring as a keepsake from her late fiancé. However, a series of tragedies and mysterious deaths seemed to follow the ring's possession. The ring eventually disappeared after a long history of bad luck and misfortune. It was borrowed by an actor who was set to play Rudolph Valentino in a documentary film, but he succumbed to a rare disease and passed away within weeks. The ring's whereabouts remain unknown, contributing to its mystery. Pola Negri's dramatic presence extended to Valentino's funeral, where she gave photographers a spectacle they could hardly believe. She fainted not once, not twice, but three times, with her second collapse onto Valentino's coffin, where she passionately declared that he had proposed to her and declared herself his widow. Her final swoon occurred in front of a lavish $2,000 flower arrangement that spelled out her first name in red and white roses, etching this unforgettable moment into Hollywood history. Number 14. Marilyn Monroe and the Kennedy Family Before her tragic death, Marilyn Monroe's personal life was in disarray. She had gone through three divorces, and persistent rumors circulated that her alleged affairs with both of the Kennedy brothers, John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy. The situation had reached a point where Monroe was reportedly considering a press conference to reveal the details of her relationships with them. The rumors about Monroe's involvement with JFK were fueled, in part, by her sultry and unforgettable happy birthday performance for the president at his 45th birthday celebration, which took place at Madison Square Garden on May 19, 1962. This iconic moment, just months before the actress's untimely death, added to the speculation about her relationship with the charismatic leader of the free world. A rare photograph taken after Monroe's remarkable performance at a party hosted by movie executive Arthur Krim remains the only known image of either Kennedy brother with the legendary actress. Her timeless beauty, iconic blonde hair, and irresistible sex appeal have inspired countless stars. Nevertheless, Monroe struggled with personal demons, including substance abuse and rumored battles with depression. While she had many famous suitors, her entanglements with then-President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert remain the most scandalous and enduring aspects of her life. The full truth about Monroe's existence and her loves may forever remain shrouded in mystery, but there's no doubt that she would have had an extraordinary tale to tell if she were still with us. Number 13. The Mysterious Death of Superman The death of George Reeves, the original Superman, remains one of those enduring American mysteries, a puzzle that may never find a complete resolution. The story of that fateful night is riddled with inconsistencies, unclear evidence, and a cast of characters as enigmatic as the incident itself, many of whom had taken their secrets to the grave. In the early morning hours of June 16, 1959, George Reeves, who had made Superman an enduring icon through his role in the first television series, was discovered lifeless in his bedroom. What adds a layer of intrigue to this tragedy is the bizarre scenario unfolding at the time. Reeves' fiancé and three guests were reveling downstairs, with his future wife allegedly narrating the events transpiring above. It wasn't until a gunshot rang out that they waited an inexplicable 45 minutes before contacting the police. The authorities swiftly ruled Reeves' death as self-inflicted. However, those close to the actor vehemently disagreed, convinced that there was no way he would have taken his own life. Their doubts weren't only born out of grief and denial. The evidence at the scene was genuinely mystifying. It's akin to an optical illusion. When viewed from one angle, the pieces seem to indicate a man who, in a moment of despair, made a tragic choice. In the aftermath of his death, 
Some attributed it to profound depression and frustration with his career. But Reeves' business manager and his mother, among others, strongly maintained that his disappointment, while real, couldn't explain his sudden demise. His mother poignantly declared, It's not like my George to do a thing like that, leaving this case forever shrouded in mystery. Number 12. The Taylor Fisher Reynolds Love Triangle there was no bigger tabloid frenzy in the late 1950s and 60s than the notorious love triangle between Debbie Reynolds, Eddie Fisher, and Elizabeth Taylor. While it was a period marked by drama, love, lust, and heartache for the trio, it surprisingly led to an unlikely friendship between Reynolds and Taylor that would stand the test of time. Reynolds and Fisher's first encounter took place overseas while they were entertaining American troops during the Korean War. However, Reynolds was already on friendly terms with Taylor. This friendship would not only endure, but strengthen after Reynolds married Fisher, a crooning tenor whose voice had catapulted him to teenage idol status and made him one of the most successful recording artists of the early 1950s. An extraordinary twist to the story came when Fisher rushed to Taylor's side following the tragic death of her husband in a plane crash. During the initial years of their marriage, Reynolds and Fisher enjoyed a charmed Hollywood life and were often seen in the company of their close friends, Taylor and her then-boyfriend film producer Mike Todd. Their bond was so tight that when Reynolds gave birth to a son in 1958, he was named Todd in honor of this friendship. However, tragedy struck when Todd met with a fatal plane crash in New Mexico, just four weeks after the birth of his namesake. Fisher flew to Taylor's side to offer comfort and, a month later, separated from Reynolds to be with Taylor. This infidelity, as described in Carrie Fisher's one-woman show Wishful Drinking, was a significant scandal in Hollywood's history. Despite her devastation, Reynolds remained publicly silent on the matter as Fisher and Taylor took center stage in the media. The public's fascination with the love triangle escalated, reaching its peak when Reynolds, after a year of hesitation, agreed to a swift divorce, allowing Fisher and Taylor to marry. Reynolds later shared her thoughts on the matter, saying, I never felt bitter about Elizabeth. A man doesn't leave a woman for another woman unless he wants to go. You know, when Mike Todd died, I sent Eddie to help Elizabeth. I don't think she ever really loved Eddie. He was an interim interest during her mourning period. Number 11. Mae West as Jane Mast It was 80 years ago that a legendary figure in Hollywood history, Mae Jane West, known as Mae West, embarked on a transformative journey in Greenwich Village. But this time, she wasn't Mae West. She was the playwright Jane Mast. Mae West began her career as the baby vamp in Brooklyn at the tender age of six in 1899. She started her journey on the vaudeville circuit, performing in mainstem reviews and musicals for 27 years. However, her rise to stardom was far from meteoric. Unlike her contemporary Texas Guinan, she encountered a series of ups and downs along the way. By the time Mae turned 30, her career seemed to be on a downward spiral. In 1923, 1924, and 1925, Legitimate theaters were turning her away, and she was forced to accept bit parts in burlesque shows, even performing under the name Mae West. It was during this challenging period that her mother offered her some crucial advice, produce her own material. Taking her mother's wisdom to heart, Mae West adopted the pen name Jane Mast and began writing her own scripts. Number 10. Charlie Chaplin's Exile Another scandalous chapter in the life of Hollywood legend Charlie Chaplin unfolded when he found himself at odds with U.S. Attorney General James P. McGranery, who accused Chaplin of being anti-American. This dispute led to Chaplin's exile from the United States. The controversy began after Chaplin's 1952 visit to the United Kingdom to promote his final film, Limelight. Upon his return to the U.S., Attorney General McGranery, believing Chaplin's views were unpatriotic, took action. McGranery banned Chaplin from re-entering the United States. Remarkably, despite living in the United States for nearly 40 years, Chaplin had never become an American citizen. Throughout his career, he created iconic films such as Modern Times, a biting satire of the machine age. However, this very film and his perceived sympathy for communism landed him in hot water during the McCarthy era. The FBI placed him under surveillance, and even a Mississippi congressman called for his deportation. Chaplin's troubles culminated in 1952 when the U.S. government revoked his re-entry permit as he was traveling to England for a vacation. Faced with this situation, rather than returning to the United States to answer the charges before a board of immigration officials, Chaplin made a momentous decision. 
He uprooted his family and relocated to Switzerland, where he would live for the rest of his life. Chaplin's return to the United States would only come decades later in 1972, when he received an honorary Academy Award. Number 9. The Madams of Hollywood In the glamorous world of 1930s Hollywood, a seemingly ordinary building at 8439 Sunset Boulevard, known today as the Piazza del Sol, had a hidden secret. It was the discreet headquarters of one of Hollywood's most notorious brothels, the House of Francis. At the helm of this clandestine establishment was its formidable madam, Lee Francis. What set her apart was her ability to keep the local police firmly under her control, thanks to generous payoffs. The cost of these bribes amounted to a staggering 40% of her profits. With the authorities in her pocket, police raids on her establishment were nothing more than a charade. No one was arrested and instead, the officers enjoyed her caviar, sipped her champagne and pocketed her cash. The House of Francis provided a luxurious haven for its employees, who had come to Hollywood with dreams of stardom, but had found work in the shadows. These young women were ready to fulfill any and all requests, and their services could fetch them as much as $1,000 per day. Even some of Hollywood's rich and famous were drawn to the House of Francis, including the renowned actress Jean Harlow, according to author E.J. Fleming's book The Fixers. Harlow was known to have prostitutes delivered to her home. On other occasions, she visited the brothel personally to select two or three male companions to take back with her, each of whom she paid a sum of $500. Number 8. Natalie Wood's Mysterious Death Natalie Wood was a rising star in Hollywood nominated for an Academy Award at the tender age of 18 for her iconic role in Rebel Without a Cause. Her career had begun early, gaining fame at just nine years old with her performance in Miracle on 34th Street. She continued to shine in classic films like West Side Story and Splendor in the Grass, earning her an Oscar. After having two children with actor Robert Wagner, she decided to slow down her career. However, a fateful Thanksgiving weekend in 1981 would change everything. Wood and Wagner invited actor Christopher Walken, her co-star in the film Brainstorm, for a yachting trip to Catalina Island. In the early hours of the morning, a shocking discovery was made. Natalie Wood's lifeless body face down in the water, the victim of an apparent drowning. The initial coroner's report pointed to accidental drowning, but whispers of a heated argument between Wood Wagner and Walken over her interactions with Walken gave rise to suspicions of foul play. For years, both Walken and Wagner remained silent, only fueling the speculation. It wasn't until Wagner's autobiography, Pieces of My Heart, that the truth began to emerge. In his book, Wagner admitted to feeling jealous of Walken and confessed to becoming angry that tragic night. In 2011, the case of Natalie Wood's death was reopened, prompted by new information provided by the yacht's captain regarding that fateful night. Yet, as of early 2012, no definitive conclusions had been reached, and neither Wagner nor Walken were considered suspects. Number 7. Clark Gable's Secret Love Child in 1953, the charismatic Clark Gable starred alongside Loretta Young in The Call of the Wild. Little did he know that this on-screen partnership would lead to a scandal that would haunt Hollywood for years to come. At the time, Gable was married to Maria Langham, and an extramarital affair with Young produced a child, a daughter named Judy. Young, a budding actress herself, went to great lengths to keep the baby a secret. She left the country when her pregnancy started showing, gave birth in California, and then took the child to an orphanage before adopting her. Judy's true parentage remained concealed. The child's mother, Loretta Young, had big aspirations for her career, and the scandal of an extramarital affair and a love child was something she couldn't afford. As a result, Judy was hidden from the public eye for the first 19 months of her life, placed in orphanages to shield her from the shame associated with her birth. Judy, born in the 1930s, grew up in an era when extramarital affairs and out-of-wedlock pregnancies were considered scandalous. Her life story mirrors those of other Hollywood celebrities who either had secret babies or were secret babies themselves. Judy, who passed away in 2011 at the age of 76, only discovered the full truth about her parentage when she was 31, as Gable never publicly acknowledged her as his child. Number 6. George Raff's History – Hollywood's Gangster-Turned-Actor George Raff's life started in the rough and tumble neighborhood of Hell's Kitchen in the early 1900s and 1910s. Growing up in this notorious area placed him right in the midst of America's mob era, where lawlessness ran rampant. 
One of Raph's lifelong friends was none other than the infamous Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, whose lengthy and violent criminal record would overshadow Raph's soon-to-be-extensive filmography. Raph attempted to distance himself from his gangster past as he pursued a career in Hollywood, but his criminal associations would continue to haunt him. In 1941, Raph's role in manpower seemed fittingly named for the off-screen turmoil it generated. Raph's clashes with his co-star Edward G. Robinson were well-known, with Robinson describing him as touchy, difficult, and thoroughly impossible to play with. Raft wasn't exactly playing a role. Despite the frequent conflicts with co-stars and producers, Raft had a kinder side. Legend has it that on the set of Each Dawn I Die in 1939, Raft's co-star, James Cagney, found himself in trouble with some of Raft's unsavory associates. The mob was ready to take matters into their own hands, but Raft managed to persuade them to spare Cagney, showing a side that was almost saintly. Number 5. Birth of the Coogan Act Jackie Coogan was just a young boy when he landed the lead role in Charlie Chaplin's iconic film, The Kid. This role catapulted him to global stardom and turned him into a household name. As he humorously puts it, I had the flu in New York and it pushed the president off the front pages. However, shocking news soon rocked the nation. Jackie's mother and stepfather had squandered nearly all of his hard-earned three to four million dollars in income, leaving him in financial ruins. In 1938, at the age of 23, Jackie took his mother and stepfather to court and emerged victorious. However, after covering legal fees, he was left with a mere $126,000 of his original fortune. This scandal prompted the state of California to take swift action, resulting in the enactment of the Coogan Act. The Coogan Act empowered judges to require that a portion of a child actor's income be set aside in a trust fund or savings account to be accessed only when the child reached the age of majority. This safeguarded the child's income, as it was to be taken from their net earnings after subtracting managerial and other fees. Despite the Coogan Act's protective measures, it contained certain loopholes that could still leave child actors financially vulnerable. For example, Judy Garland's mother requested a step in from her daughter's salary in exchange for chaperoning and ensuring compliance with the studio's demands. Elizabeth Taylor's mother made a similar arrangement, deducting 10% of her daughter's salary for her managerial role. Even well-intentioned parents found it challenging to manage their child's wealth. When 22-year-old Shirley Temple inquired about her bank account balance, her father, who had been managing her earnings from childhood, revealed that only $44,000 remained of the approximately $3.4 million she had earned as a child star. Number 4. Jean Harlow's Forced Marriage Jean Harlow, the original blonde bombshell, rose to stardom after her appearance in Howard Hughes' film Hell's Angels. Her life, however, was far from the glamorous roles she portrayed on screen. She experienced a series of tumultuous relationships and marriages. At the tender age of 15, Harlow entered her first marriage, which ended in divorce just a few years later. Her second husband tragically died in a gunshot accident, though rumors swirled that she might have been involved. Her involvement with a married boxer created a scandal that jeopardized her career leading the studio to force her into a marriage of convenience with cinematographer Harold Rawson. This marriage was purely for public image and they quietly divorced a few months later when the scandal subsided. Harlow did yearn for a genuine marriage, particularly with William Powell, whom she fell in love with while filming Reckless in 1935. She hoped to marry him, have a family, and retire from acting. However, Powell, who had recently divorced Carol Lombard, was cautious and didn't want to rush into another marriage, fearing public backlash. He also made it clear that he had no desire to have children. Despite Powell's concerns, Harlow found herself pregnant. She knew that Powell didn't want children and the studio wouldn't tolerate an unmarried mother. Thus, she made the heart-wrenching decision to have an abortion, all while keeping it a secret from Powell. Number 3. William Randolph Hearst and the Mysterious Death of Thomas Eanes William Randolph Hearst, the influential newspaper tycoon and inspiration for Orson Welles' Citizen Kane, was known for his ruthless and occasionally malicious nature. While he suspected that his mistress, Marion Davies, was having an affair with Charlie Chaplin, Hearst devised an unusual way to confront the situation. Instead of directly addressing Chaplin, Hearst invited Chaplin along with other film industry figures to join him on his yacht. This gathering undoubtedly made for awkward and tense conversations. Thomas Ince, a Hollywood producer specializing in Western films, joined the trip in the hope of securing investments for his floundering studio. 
During this voyage, a tragic event unfolded and its official version claimed that Ince had developed digestive problems and died, even though he was quickly hospitalized. Strangely, Ince's body was immediately cremated. Rumors persisted that Hearst had attempted to shoot Chaplin but missed, inadvertently killing Ince instead. The Los Angeles Times originally ran the headline, Movie Producer Shot on Hearst Yacht, but the story was swiftly pulled from later editions. A secretary aboard the yacht reportedly witnessed Ince bleeding from a gunshot wound to the head. Ince's wife embarked on an abrupt tour of Europe, making her unavailable for comment. Number 2. Alfred Hitchcock was a stalker. Alfred Hitchcock, known for his exceptional directing talents, had a peculiar and unsettling side to his personality. Despite being married for 54 years, he developed an obsession with his leading ladies that went beyond his professional role. Actresses like Grace Kelly and Janet Lee, who worked with him, shared their experiences about his controlling nature. Hitchcock prohibited them from interacting with other cast members and insisted that they only travel to the set with him. However, it was Tippi Hedren who became the primary focus of Hitchcock's obsession. After the success of Psycho, Hitchcock chose the relatively unknown actress Hedren to star in The Birds, making her an overnight sensation. But Hitchcock had her bound by a contract that left her in a vulnerable position. On the set of The Birds, Hitchcock isolated Hedren from the rest of the cast and went to great lengths to make her feel isolated. He fabricated claims that other cast members disliked her while making unwanted advances towards her. Hedren believes that the scenes in which she was attacked by birds were Hitchcock's form of revenge. Instead of using mechanical crows as intended, he used live birds that were tied to her with elastic. The birds became agitated and attacked her. One particularly gruesome scene with real birds attacking her in a bedroom took five days to shoot. Hedren eventually reached her breaking point, and when she referred to Hitchcock as a fat pig and rebuffed his advances, he began to undermine her career. He refused to cast her in his future projects and simultaneously prevented her from working with other directors. When she won an award for her work in The Birds, Hitchcock did not allow her the time to collect it. He also actively campaigned against her to hinder her chances of receiving an Oscar nomination. Though Tippi Hedren continued her career, it never truly recovered from the damage Hitchcock inflicted upon it. Number 1. John Lennon Outraged Religious Americans John Lennon's statement that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus caused a major stir in the United States in the mid-1960s. The comment, initially published in the London Evening Standard in March 1966, received relatively little attention at first. However, when it was later reprinted in the American teen magazine Datebook four months later, it triggered widespread outrage. Several American radio DJs publicly smashed Beatles records on the air and encouraged listeners to send their Beatles records and merchandise to the station for similar destruction. The controversy surrounding Lennon's statement escalated quickly. Yet, in a twist of irony, one of Lennon's later works, the song Imagine, which envisioned a world with no religion, received widespread acclaim and nearly toppled the music charts. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more Hollywood scandals, stories, and investigations. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you never miss out on the latest updates. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.